Hey guys, Ben here and welcome back to another video and today it's something a little bit different because recently I've tried VR for the very first time and straight away, me being me, I took it straight to sim racing and I just want to talk about the experience because it's just, it's just absolutely blown my mind really what's possible and it's just so different to sitting in front of a monitor and your, your references are all different, it's just a completely new experience and it's something that I really got excited about. Uh, and I just want to talk about a few talking points about VR in sim racing and why I think it's ju it's just amazing. And you know, I'm trying to weigh up the pros and cons of it. And yeah, I'm just going to talk a bit about VR in sim racing in this video. So first of all, my first impressions. Well, you've probably gathered by now that I was absolutely blown away. Uh, the first time I drove VR in Assetto Corsa because uh, that's on my system what ran best with VR. The first session I did was the F2004 around Imola and honestly I was I got goosebumps and I, I was just absolutely gobsmacked. I was speechless at how how much I was immersed into the experience and I genuinely felt like at one point I was driving a Formula 1 car around Imola and you know I was almost brought to tears by it. It was actually amazing and I genuinely at one point felt like I was in that car at that track and you know you can look around you can sort of bob your head up to look down at the front wheels and it was just amazing you'll see a clip of a race around Imola in the F2004 later on in the video but um, obviously a clip here of the Formula Hybrid 2020 car around the uh, Red Bull ring in Austria and again in these cars um, you actually realize when you're driving in VR how little of an issue in terms of visibility the halo is it's really not an issue when you're in VR Compared to when you're on a monitor, when you're on a monitor, the halo, uh, you know, center beam can really get in the way of your view. But when you're in VR, you don't even really see it. So I really understand now why the drivers in real life are not phased in terms of visibility by the halo. So that's really, really cool to see. And it's really cool how VR can give you that experience. And then you can kind of get in the, in, in the head of a real racing driver in some aspects. So the second point I want to talk about then is immersion and well you, you don't get more immersed than virtual reality. A triple, you know, a triple screen setup would obviously be more immersive than a single monitor setup however it will not match the full field of view and the full 360 view of virtual reality it just can't be matched. However there are some downsides to that and we'll talk about that a little bit later on. But just to wrap up on the immersion point for me, it was extremely immersive straight away, and I think that was helped by the fact, particularly when driving single-seater cars, that I have a Next Level Racing FGT uh, cockpit, which I've pretty much always had set up in the formula seating position, and obviously using my Logitech wheel, my hands and my body, my legs, on screen, in virtual reality, they were exactly where they felt like they were in real life. So. You know, when I was looking down at my body and I could see the race suit and the seat belt, I genuinely felt like I was sat in that position and sat in that car. And that just added to the immersion. And I think that's why I was so taken aback when I went in that first session in the F2004 at Imola. And I just had goosebumps because the cockpit, the wheel, in conjunction with the virtual reality headset, it really immersed me in that, in that scenario. And I genuinely felt like I was like I said in that car at that track at that time it's just unbelievable but the third point I want to talk about is does it make you faster well no it doesn't and everybody's spoken about this in the sim racing community you know spending more money on kit does not make you faster some of the fastest people in the world use Logitech wheels like myself I use a Logitech wheel I'm not saying I'm one of the fastest in the world mind but I know some of the fastest drivers in esports use just you know entry-level gear and a single screen setup because there's only so many cues you need for breaking points and turning points and getting on the throttle that you don't need that extra immersion to enable you to go faster. That you get to a point with um, sim racing where you know you hit that point and then upgrading your kit is going to give you more feedback, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to make you faster. But it's whether you want that extra immersion and then whether that will help your consistency and I genuinely believe that VR in, well it, it helped my consistency improve uh, on the few sessions I've done with it so far uh, particularly an online race around Imola in the F2004 I felt like my consistency was much improved and I was making a lot less mistakes 
than I would if I was just using my normal single screen monitor. So I don't believe it makes you faster overall over one lap, but I do believe over the course of a race distance, it will improve your consistency in your overall race time, if you like. Okay, so the next point I want to talk about, guys, is compromise. And of course, in terms of uh, computer performance, there are going to be ha there's going to have to be compromises made in order to run the extra functionality that virtual reality is offering. So obviously you've got a much, much wider uh, resolution that has to be rendered because you're able to look round, obviously, and on a single monitor setup, it's only really having to render images for... Um, you know, I've got a 1080p monitor, for example, so it's only having to render images with, for the 1080p resolution, whereas with the virtual reality headset, it's a much larger resolution. And uh, as well as that, to get it nice and crisp on the VR headset, you have to turn up the pixel density and other, other settings, which I won't go into too much detail about because there's a lot more videos on YouTube about how you set that up. But um, yeah, there's obviously a lot more going on in terms of... Um, load on your PC. So you do have to make compromises and that means, for example, for me, in my case, I can run a set of Corsa easily with the custom shaders patch um, on maxed out settings when I'm using it on my sc single screen monitor. But I had to turn down to sort of medium to high settings when using the virtual reality headset. And even at that point, I still wasn't quite achieving 60 FPS. So that's a bit of a downside when it comes to virtual reality is, you know, you, the load on, that's placed on your PC and particularly on your GPU is massively increased and as such you have to turn down those settings. But I do think when you find a good compromise in those uh, video settings then if you can really uh, fine tune it, get the FPS you're after as well as getting the quality good and being able to see quite you know well into the distance and pick your breaking points up nicely then I'd probably have to say that the advantages of running virtual reality in a sim racing setup outweigh the negatives because you really won't notice the lack of graphical detail when you're racing around a track in virtual reality because you know your mind is just overwhelmed and you know you're you genuinely at times forget that you're in virtual reality and you're just absolutely immersed in the experience and I really don't think if you can get that comp you know that compromise right in those visual settings I don't think it'll be bo it'll bother too many users to be honest but I wouldn't recommend probably running VR on a low-end gaming PC setup because I think it will just it will just cook your PC basically um, but I'd say AC for me on my system and I'll leave my specs of my PC system down in the description in case you're interested but I think for my system AC ran particularly well in VR but ACC or a set of course of competizione which is the GT3 simulator which runs the Unreal Engine which is a lot more demanding on a PC than the engine used of the original set of Corsa that one struggled for me in VR and I would have to turn that one down to low settings almost for VR to run smoothly and effectively but Still, it's one that I'm going to try again soon in the future, and if you want to see videos about that, then please do let me know down in the comments section. But for compromise, that pretty much wraps that section up. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is cost. And let's be honest, it's not cheap. For this experience, for my experience, I've actually been using an Oculus Quest 2. It's not my, it's not my VR headset. It's actually been loaned to be by my brother, which is really nice. But um, yeah, so it's his headset, and I've just borrowed it and used it for sim racing on my system. So it's expensive. The Quest 2, for example, the cheapest one, the 64 gig, is 300 pound or there or thereabouts. It's 299 pound, and they're actually pretty much sold out everywhere now and the only one you can get your hands on is the 256 gig and that's an extra hundred pounds so now we're talking 400 pound or 399 pounds and that's not cheap I mean that's almost half the cost that I spent on building my own PC so you know it's not uh, virtual reality sim racing is not cheap to get into but then again sim racing in general is becoming a much more expensive uh, hobby to get into uh, in, in my opinion anyway because you know the entry level now is the Logitech uh, steering wheel systems and they're still 200 pound or even more on the newer systems with the G923 that recently got released so you know it's becoming more and more expensive VR is no exception to that rule it's particularly expensive but I do feel that the immersion and everything that I've spoken about throughout this video it makes it may be worth it depending on your particular circumstances and then 
you know, I'll wrap all of my thoughts up in the final part of this video. But, yeah, in terms of cost, it's not cheap. Let's just say that. Okay, so I think it's about time that we wrap this video up. And I'm going to conclude my thoughts and give you the clear list of pros and cons when it comes to VR in sim racing. And this is just my opinion, guys. Uh, you know, there's plenty of other guys out there who probably have different opinions. And leave your thoughts down below in the comment section if they differ from myself. But starting off with the pros, and obviously it's massively increased immersion and improved consistency in racing situations and I also think that your awareness of what's going on around you is much more improved because you can physically look in the mirrors on each side in a single seater for example uh, like we're seeing on the screen right now you can physically look in the mirrors on either side and it's just easier to pick up your cues for braking, turning and uh, acceleration out of corners and even though, obviously, I'm running a static simulator, I feel like with virtual reality, it's easier to tell what's going on with the car because your, your, obviously your scope of your vision, let's say, is much, much more improved and much wider, much larger, and it just gives you that extra bit of reference uh, to, as to what's going on with the car. The two main cons, or the two only cons, I should say, is, of course, increased demand on your PC, increased load on your GPU, which means that you have to turn down some visual settings, and the games, you know, the simulators aren't going to look quite as crisp and clear as they maybe do on a single or triple screen setup. And then the final con, of course, is the cost. And like I said, they're not cheap, the VR headsets are not cheap, and you don't really want to get a cheap one because you need... with sim racing in particular you need to be able to see clearly uh, into the distance for example to pick up those brake markers to pick up all the visual cues that you need to complete uh, consistent fast laps and that pretty much wraps, wraps up my thoughts so I mean unbelievable VR has really changed my outlook on sim racing if you want to see more sim racing videos guys if you want to see more VR videos on the channel then please do let me know down in the comment section below don't forget to smash that like button and click subscribe for more Formula One and sim racing content to come. But thank you very much for watching this video, guys. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one.